What is going on my fellow crypto, future crypto geniuses? Today is October 22nd, 2018. I call you a crypto genius because looking back, many of your friends and family are gonna wonder how you knew about such a revolutionary technology before it became mainstream. Just how did you know? How did you know to take that risk? Why did you do it? How'd you know it would pay off? Well, the secret is we didn't, but we took a very, very, very educated guess. Before we jump into this video, if you're new to the channel, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and yeah, let's get into it. Anyway, there's some stuff I want to talk in this video. This one's going to be a little bit shorter. Um, I actually probably want to do a more detailed video later, but I just wanted to come on and do this quick video because is it just me or is there something going on? Is there something in the air? Is it something I'm just breathing in? So overwhelmingly, the sentiment has shifted in 2018, but what I've noticed recently is that the people who have stuck around just how much confidence there is. And I think we've shifted from that mindset of we could have a breakout any day to accepting a more long-term view. Again, goes back to kind of the psychology of the markets, but I just want to say I feel like something is definitely brewing in the air. As somebody who has spent every single day uh, of 2018 in one way or another um, participating and trying to keep active and monitor kind of the market and how how everything is happening, uh, as well as many of you, without a doubt, a lot of you are in the same boat, kind of you know spending every day uh, trying to keep tabs on the market, try to trying to learn and keep up with the news, as well as just kind of get a feel for what's going on. You know, who's entering the space, who's leaving the space. But with that being said, I feel as if there is a shift happening now in terms of the space. And, and it's not reflective in the price right now, and it will be. You can definitely sense the fact that the few that are still involved and the few that are still very passionate and the few that are still very active in the community have never been more sure about this technology and have never been more sure about the opportunity at hand to make money. Now... With that being said, I just want to put, bring your attention to this. You know, this is something we see pretty often, actually. Huge amounts of cryptocurrency, whether it's Bitcoin, whether it's Litecoin, whether it's Ethereum, we've seen it all. You know, millions and millions, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of it being sent for, you know, less than pennies, right? And so this kind of will transition me to a point that I had. I was at my friend's house last night and his mother, shout out to you, Linda. She's very educated. She has a very nice job, very well-paying job. She's essentially like as high up as she can get in the uh, state system where she works. And I had about a 20 to 30 minute conversation with her about crypto and Bitcoin. I mean, my friends and I were hanging out in the kitchen and I saw I saw her, I walked up to her, I just started talking to her a little bit about it to see if she was interested in it, to see what she thought of it. As I do with essentially everybody that I encounter, again, if, uh, if you're around me 24 seven and you're not involved in crypto, it probably becomes pretty annoying because I constantly just... Uh, I'm constantly talking about cryptocurrency nonstop, especially to people who I'm unsure what their opinion on it is so I can get their opinion and so I can hopefully sway their opinion and tell them what the benefits of crypto and Bitcoin are. And, and again, shout out to all you guys and girls out there. I know many of you do the same thing with your family and friends. Another way of spreading adoption, right? So anyway, I was having this conversation with her and I explained a little bit, maybe like five minutes or so, but then she kind of just kept going back to this one point and she said, so why should I use Bitcoin over my Visa MasterCard? And instantly, of course, I had I had um, a response to that. Basically, I told her about the insane fees that, that come coupled with the financial system, like debit cards and credit cards that don't exist with, with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, how you essentially don't have to pay any fees. They're essentially instant in comparison. They can't be censored, meaning uh, a bank or a third party can't can't tell you what you can and can't spend your money on. Uh, and so on and so forth. You know, I went through a lot of it. Um, but then, you know, further on to the conversation, she said, well, well, how do I know they're not just going to shut it down? And I said, what do you mean? She said, H how do I know they're, j they're just not going to shut Bitcoin down? Or is Bitcoin just going to get closed down? And I said, well, that's essentially the power of decentralization is that that, that can't happen. There is no Bitcoin office you can walk into. Uh, and you can't just say like, hey, all of you are under arrest or we're, we're seizing the company or something like that. That's the power of decentralization. And I told her if that could happen, that would have happened years ago. If the Fed or the government or whoever wanted to shut it down, it would have been shut down years ago. But that is the power of decentralization. Not only is it more efficient in terms of fees, in terms of speed, in terms of censorship resistance, but it's more powerful in the sense that nobody can control it. Nobody can stop it, essentially. 
And even with just those key points, I mean, there's so many more details to Bitcoin as well as just many other cryptocurrencies. I mean, it's a whole, a whole growing field, right? It's still in its infancy, but it's still growing so much. But even with all of that being said, I think those are some very foundational, important aspects of cryptocurrency that are good seeds to plant in people that you talk to. You know, if they don't have a ton of interest or knowledge in crypto, I think those are some very key things that maybe like are worth talking about and are worth sharing with people. All of us watching, um, I assume, watching this channel and other crypto channels are really pushing for crypto adoption. Um, whether it's because you simply want to see the price rise or whether it's because you want to legitimately pay for everything in the future with with cryptocurrency that's the end goal and that's what we want and so i i make videos on this channel i talk about talk about it on here but you bet i spend hours and hours outside of youtube and outside of the internet talking to people in real life and trying to convince them as well essentially in the same way i mean the way i try and talk on this channel is kind of one-on-one -on -one as well like i'm talking to one the person viewing this even though it usually goes out to thousands of people but this is the same way i approach um, people that I meet in real life. But yeah, guys, that's my point. I mean, look at this, 183 million US dollars worth of Ethereum sent for less than six cents. Could that happen with a Visa or MasterCard? Uh, no, no, it couldn't. And the only other thing I wanted to bring up here uh, was an article published on CCN.com. The title here is that the Bitcoin network congestion reaches 95%, but fees hold steady. So it says here, popular cryptocurrency analyst Willie Wu has observed what many others in the community have overlooked. While this year's market downturn has shaved off approximately 70% of Bitcoin's value, the network is quietly scaling. It's a sign that blockchain pioneers have been touting during the market downdraft, which is that developers keep their heads down and work without being distracted uh, by the noise that's created in the space with prices and all the hype and everything. Congestion on the network reached 95% last week. And if you were tra transacting Bitcoin, you wouldn't have experienced an uptick in transaction fees, which still remain roughly 10 cents, even for transactions as large as almost $200 million. Uh, and then right here, there's a, co a comparison of charts from 2017 versus 2018. He's quoted here saying, during the bear market, no less, Bitcoin's blocks peak above 95% without anyone noticing. The fees and confirmed times remain normal remain nominal. Bitcoin of 2018 is not Bitcoin of 2017. The protocol is quietly improving. And so this is what I've been mentioning as well. You know, when the next bull run does come around, we don't want to see what we saw in 2017, where all of a sudden the fees skyrocket and it takes forever to send a Bitcoin and everything like that. That's one of the huge benefits that 2018 has brought for us is that people have been working quietly behind the scenes to help the scalability issue. And so that when the next bull run does come around, we don't encounter that same hindrance. Because there's not a doubt in my mind if we wouldn't wouldn't have encountered that hindrance, there probably would have been even more people to enter the space if they would have seen how efficient and quick it is. But unfortunately, you know, the last few months of 2017, I think people saw a lot of messier transactions in, in the sense that, you know, it did take longer. It was not instant. Uh, the fees were kind of ridiculous at a point. Do you remember back in 2017 when it would be like $50 to only send like a certain amount of Bitcoin? I mean, if if things back then would have been different, if they would have been as cheap technologically improved as they are now, maybe more people would have stuck around. But the good thing about that is, the point is, we things have gotten better. And so when the next bull run inevitably does come around, it should scale much better. And again, that should retain a lot of the people into the space. And we'll, we'll end up leaving the next bull run with a bigger community, just like we ended up leaving 2017 with a much bigger community as well. Granted, there's still so much growth that has yet to uh, occur, but the crypto community is much bigger than it was in, say, for example, 2015 or 2016. Again, these are some charts here. I'll leave a link to this um, if you want to check it out in the description. It goes on to say that the capacity to perform for Bitcoin is about seven transactions per second, which is a far cry from the tens of thousands of TPS that the Visa network can handle. But as Andreessen Horowitz general partner Katie Hahn recently explained in recent days, we're still in the dial up days. Architecture has not been built yet to scale up programmable money, but it is happening. It's happening now. And that again is another illustration of why it's so important to, if you wanna invest, get in earlier, sooner than later. But that's gonna be it for this quick episode today, guys. I hope everyone's having a great day. If you're new to the channel, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.